Oh man, this is what I woke up to. Oh man. I guess it's a good thing I got up early. And I'm gonna need to leave a little earlier. <sighs> well, I guess I better get the pre-trip done on the truck. Get her running, warmed up. We better get on our way, because I have a feeling traffic is gonna be a little slower than usual this morning. It's snowing here in Minnesota. Things have heated up or cooled up. This is nuts. So I called the customer again. You know what I did yesterday? I called the wrong location and I made an appointment at the wrong location. The location I'm going to is further south in Aronico. I guess I called their main headquarters, but they didn't tell me. They said it was the right location. So I was all confused this morning. I'm glad I didn't go to the wrong location but the location that I am delivering at is first come first serve. And it's not snowing there, it's two hours south of here. So I could have gone all the way there last night and avoided all of this snow and parked like in their yard or something. Now I gotta deal with the snow today. So, whoops, but uh, we're still on time. It's just I have to deal with the snow right now and we gotta get through Minneapolis today. Fantastical, all right, well, Let's get rolling. Let's get out of this snow. I have strict instructions from the receiver to not bring this snow with me. <laughs> Apparently it's not snowing there. There we go. It's very sticky snow too. It's, ugh. You know what? Before we get going even. Man, that happened quick. I just wiped this off. Oh man. Kenworth W900, I can't reach. Oh man, it's a thick layer. Anyways, I have heated mirrors. It's just falling on it so quickly that I can't keep up. Man. Oh, that's that's great. Let's try that again. Minnesota, what are you doing to me? I wasn't ready. Turn left and ready. Turn left into 140 meters. Oh, come on, pickup. Let's go. Come on, come on. That's a nice pickup. Look at that. That's a 2500 Denali. I'll wait for a Denali. I can have patience for a Denali. In 200 meters, turn left on CR8 and then take the entrance to the right at 70 meters. Oh, look at this mess. Look at this mess. All we can do is be happy that we're going to be out of this in a little while. Let's hope the traffic isn't all messed up. You know it will be. Let's hope that nobody had any accidents and closed the highway.
south side of Minneapolis on 494. Thankfully, got rid of the snow. You know, I'm really glad that I double checked where I was going in the receiver. You know, I was thinking yesterday, it, it surprised me that the receiver didn't like tell me that, oh, that doesn't sound like our freight. That doesn't match our records. I don't think it's for us. He didn't say anything. He just said, okay, I'll see you at 1230. I bet you they were hoping to get a free load of lumber. Not today, Trucker Josh is on duty. I mean, I would have realized it when I got there, but I would have wasted all that time going there. And they were just gonna unload it, like as if it was theirs. Like, I, Honesty and integrity, people. In one but, kilometer, I mean, keep to the left on I-494. I always double, triple check everything, so I would have caught it, and I did catch it. So we are going to a different location. I just could have been at that location last night already. We're still on schedule. We're still going to get there at the same time, get unloaded at the same time. But I mean, I just could have been a little bit, had a little bit of extra time to play with today to get down to Burlington. I'm not rushed, but I mean, as long as I don't hit another snowstorm. Keep to the left on I-494. You want any advice? If you're getting into trucking, double and triple check everything. Addresses, shippers. Sometimes they got the same name, but they have different locations. Sometimes they have similar names, but different towns Continue nearby. Continue on this road for seven kilometers. happens right and no one's gonna catch your mistakes but you okay if you're making a mistake and it's benefiting someone else they're not gonna stop you can you imagine what a mess that would have been that would have been the first time ever that that happened it didn't happen today and we're gonna make double triple sure it won't happen tomorrow appointment time which means 15 minutes before the actual appointment time 
but not earlier. If you're on time, you're late. We're in Waterloo, Iowa. We're gonna have to make a left turn up ahead. We're just coming up to the city center. I'm not sure if I'll be able to turn from that right lane, but I'm just gonna prepare for my turn now, get in this left lane. We'll see what happens when we get around the corner up ahead here. This looks like we're driving through a very old part of the city. This could be a really awesome neighborhood if you, you know, refurbish all the homes in the streets. That would be pretty cool. One kilometer, keep to the left on US 218 South I-380. Okay, we're going on to I-380 and I am keeping left. Iowa always reminds me a lot of Southern Manitoba. Very, very similar. Just with a lot more people, right? Southern Manitoba is mostly farms, agriculture, settled around the same time, so the, the architecture and houses look very, very similar. In 600 meters, keep to the left on US 218 South I-380. We're go over the Cedar River, and then we should have our turn up ahead. Oh, I can turn left from that lane now, can I? Why is there a person in the middle of the road here? What are you doing? Hey, there's a crosswalk like 100 feet that meters, way. Keep to the left on US 218 South I-380. Okay, so what's going on here? So uh, that lane, so I could be in that right lane, but I could also be in this lane. All right, well, I wasn't sure, so I wanted to make sure that I wouldn't miss my turn. I've never gone through this intersection before. And this is the, uh, or interchange, I guess, it's not intersection. This highway that I'm on merges onto the interstate. I didn't know there was two lanes. In five kilometers, keep to the right on I-380 US 20 IA 27. Look how massive this bridge is here, this overpass. That's one thing that I can't relate to from Manitoba. Manitoba does not understand overpasses. It's like we get one new overpass around Winnipeg every 50 years. Everything's got traffic lights. Traffic lights and backed up traffic. Okay, now I recognize this. I usually come down to 380 from the north and merge here from the right onto this same road. This part of the road I recognize. Okay, right two lanes, I need to move over. We're gonna get right on over here. There we go. Perfect. Okay. I think we're set now. Look at that fancy building on the right. What is that? Iowa Veterans Museum. That's pretty cool. I'd like to go in there. You notice how all these new cars, they all look like spaceships? Speaking of new cars, we'll be in the market looking uh, end of next year, so end of 2025 is when we're uh, gonna start sniffing around for new vehicles. We know exactly what we want already. We just gotta find the best deal. We're looking for a GMC Yukon. And I guess at that time, we might even be looking at the 2026 models. We wanna go new, it's for the family, right? My pickup truck's not as important. We can have a used old pickup truck paid off but for the family, I want my wife and my kids to have a, a nice new vehicle, have some warranty on it, four wheel drive, good ground clearance so that it doesn't get stuck in the snow easily, right? And honestly, those SUVs are big. I like that, and that's one of the reasons I want them to have such a big SUV, because if they're ever, God forbid, involved in an accident, 
usually the bigger vehicle wins, right? So my logic is that if my wife and my children are in the biggest vehicle, they'll be the safest. Plus, we both really like those SUVs, and there's a whole bunch of things. The SUV, the, the Yukon can pull the boat that we want to get. Uh, it's got lots of room for storage, so we can take the dogs, the kids, and all of our luggage along on road trips or to the to the lake while pulling the boat. So we can do everything with one vehicle, right? Depending on how many kids we end up having, we might get the Yukon XL, but you know, it looks like life is only going to give us maybe one or two. Well, we have one, maybe two. We're hoping for three or more. We wanted to have at least four, right? But you guys who have followed my channel long enough, you know that we've struggled with that and we have our son now through the IVF process. And we've tried again through another egg retrieval in the IVF process and that failed. We didn't get anything out of that. But uh, we have a transfer coming up next month, which means that there's a viable embryo that they're going to attempt to uh, implant. And that's how my wife got pregnant the first time. So it's our last one and our last shot at it. So we're hoping for the best. But anyways, yeah, a Yukon is, uh, we'll be in the market for it uh, in a little over a year, but a year to a year and a half. We'll see. We'll see if our financial plan comes to pass. It's uh, a lot of time between now and then, a lot of things that could happen, right? truck stop where we're staying just outside of Burlington we got quite a bit of time I have like oh, 14, 15 hours before I need to uh, well actually 16 hours before I need to be there we're gonna try and find a good spot I'll be nice and quiet I think that's the spot right there actually I'm gonna turn around and back in there Go take a look at what's available over here first. I gotta make an educated decision. I wanna make sure that uh, I get the best possible spot, you know? Best one. We took that first spot that we saw as we uh, pulled in. Seems quiet enough. Stopped here many times before. This is where I always sleep when I have to pick up these tires. Usually I park over on the other side there, but for some reason, seven o'clock in the in the evening, it's all full there already. Lots of space along the back here. Okay. 
Yeah. Time to do the post trip. Just walk around, make sure everything is as it should be. And I can relax and watch some Netflix for a bit yet, I think. The trailers are pretty low in the back. <laughs> Not quite touching the ground there, but goes up a little bit. The tires are lower, obviously. And wouldn't that be crazy though if your trailer was that low all the time? Oh, every little bridge connection and bump, you'd be banging the concrete and sparks would be flying. Yeah. That wouldn't be good. But, oh, got a puddle here, let's be careful. Oh, that's mud. Oh, that was muddier than I thought it was. Just want to check my tires here. Man, there is a mud puddle there. Watch out. Dang it, got mud on my shoes now. Oh, that's great. Looking good. Tarps are right here. I won't need them for this load. I believe I'll be able to leave them right there because I think they put two rows of tires, like single rows, but two pallets of tires up here. And then the second one, I think, oh, I'll probably actually have to move them in a little bit because I think the next one will start around here. So we'll have to turn them this way. That's okay. And I'll load the rest of this up. So tomorrow's going to be a rush day. What day isn't a rush day, right? I know you're, I say that so often that uh, you guys just see it as normal already, but tomorrow is an exceptionally rushed day because uh, my son has a haircut the following day on Saturday. It's his first haircut. So he's a little over one and a half years old and we haven't cut his hair yet and we have made an appointment for him and I want to be there for it. It's at 12.30 on Saturday in the afternoon. It's going to be tight. <laughs> but if I rush and if we don't hit any delays, I should be able to be there for it. So that's it. We made it down here. Tomorrow's the big day, the big long day. It'll be a full day. We'll see how far we get. Let's see if we can make it. I'll let you know though, so tune in tomorrow. Remember, every YouTuber always tells you these exact same things after every one of their videos. Please subscribe, it does more than you think. I know half of you watching aren't subscribed. Go down there, it's free, click that subscribe button. While you're there, hit that bell so you don't miss my next video that goes up, I really appreciate that. If you do wanna take it a step further, you can support by hitting the join now button down below the video. It makes you a member of the channel, which means you get privileged access to watch the videos first. You get early access to all the videos and uh, you also get your comments that get sent through to a, a separate file folder where I see them uh, before the other comments. But I do read every single comment, whether you remember or not. So please, if you don't wanna do the membership, you can leave the comment down below in the comment section. That's uh, another free way of supporting the channel. That tells YouTube that you liked it enough to take the time to type out a comment. And that means a lot to me too. If you like it enough to take the time to comment, that that's, that's actually the greatest thing you can do. It helps get the word out to other people. And speaking of getting the word out to other people, share it on your social media, on your Facebook, on your X accounts, wherever you want to. Send them back to my page. Tell everybody you know to go subscribe to Trucker Josh on YouTube. You can just Google. Just tell him. It's easy. He's a trucker and his name's Josh. Google him. Trucker Josh. And go subscribe to his YouTube channel. If you can do that for me, that'd be fantastic. I'll see you tomorrow. We'll be running from Iowa all the way back up to Canada.